In the next five minutes, I'm going to be telling you how to write a killer personal statement if you're looking to study mathematics at university. My name's Jamie and I studied mathematics at Oxford University. I did, of course, the whole Oxford admissions process and applied to four other universities as well. And I've got all five offers, ended up studying maths at Oxford. And now I work full time helping students across the globe uh, to study maths or who want to study maths at top universities such as Oxford and Cambridge. Anyway, what are the biggest tips I have for your personal statement? Firstly, biggest thing, and I've mentioned this a million times before, Oxbridge don't care. If you're writing a personal statement and you're applying to Oxbridge, amazing, don't write your personal statement for Oxbridge. They won't read it. They don't care. They won't read it. I'm going to say it once. That's all. Write your personal statement for your other four universities. Those are the universities that don't have interviews or maybe don't have an admissions test, so they don't really have as much to judge you by, and so your personal statement is going to be the thing that leads most of the weight. So this video is actually for students who are applying to other universities apart from Oxbridge. So if you're just applying to Oxbridge, which probably isn't a great idea, apply to other universities, you can apply to up to five. Um, this, this, this video is not for you. This video is for students who are applying to non-Oxbridge, but still pretty strong universities. What should you talk about in your personal statement? Firstly, the biggest thing you want to kind of come across or you want to come across as is a big maths nerd. You want to come across in your whole personal statement as a big maths nerd. Three things that I always say to my students. You want to say that you want to make it clear that you enjoy maths, you're good at maths, and you're fit to study maths at university. Those are the three things that, through the three questions in your personal statement, you need to basically convey. It doesn't have to be one for one question, one from another, one for another. It can be kind of distributed across, but that's essentially the the, the message that you're trying to convince uh, the person reading your personal statement that this guy is a big old maths nerd. Before I continue, if you are actually planning on doing the TMUA, I just thought I'd let you know I'm running a TMUA masterclass series from the beginning of September where I'm going to be going through all the major areas that students find, uh, you know, struggle with. Um, so if you're interested in that, want any further details, send me a DM on Instagram at jpymaths. Just DM me TMUA and I'll give you all the details or equally uh, send me an email inquiries at jpymathstutoring.com. All, all, all the info for that will be in the description below. Anyway, um, in terms of how you can kind of come across in your personal statement as a big old math nerd, what could you do? So there's various things you can talk about, your experiences, any qualifications or additional qualifications, competitions you may have done in math, uh, books you've read, lectures you've attended, uh, research projects you've done, all these various different things. Now, one thing you shouldn't do is just list. Or it shouldn't just be, I've done this, 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 I've done this. That's not very exciting read. What they really want to see is some depth. So they want to kind of see the journey that you went on in your learning uh, and of your learning of a very particular thing. They want a, snip, a snapshot of, of that. So let's say, for example, you were interested in how sat navs work. Random example. Um, so you were maybe one day in a car and you typed in an address and you're like, oh, okay, cool. The sat nav instantly has managed to work out what the quickest route is from here to there how was it managed to do that and then you went and did some research and you learned about Dijkstra's algorithm and you learned how it works how it operates uh, why you know a proof for why it gives you the shortest distance um, or the sh shortest route between two points or the shortest path and maybe then you went on to research some other related problems like the traveling salesman problem or things like this that's what they want to hear this kind of mathematical discovery, this journey that you went on. So you want to say something like, oh, I found this really interesting. I stumbled across this. And so I went and re you know, learned about this. And that caused me to learn this. And they want to, that's a great way to go, wow, this guy's a big old math nerd. Why on earth would he be researching all these additional things if he didn't have to? So firstly, make those things, make sure those things are things that you can uh, you know, that aren't on like the A-level syllabus. They don't want to hear, oh, I got really fascinated by, um, uh, I don't know. M I mean, maybe it can start with you got fascinated by geometric sums from the A-level course and then you took that to something uh, interesting beyond outside of school. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what they want to see. They want to see, oh, I found this interesting, so I went and learned this, so I went and learned this, so I went and learned this. Because that's what you're going to be doing at university. You're going to have to be motivating yourself. You're going to learn something in the lectures and go, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then from that, you might go, have to go away and go, cool, oh, that theorem's quite cool. Where can I use that? Oh, that result's interesting. Let me, let me use that here. And that's kind of what they want to see. Is this student going to be fit for this course through that? Through that? Um, so, yeah, so that, that's something you can, uh, you, you want to kind of talk and kind of, that's a general idea for maybe things to talk about. And it's a great way to convey how big a math nerd you are. One thing I would say, 
and lots of students fall into the trap of this when writing a personal statement, is just name dropping. So they'll name some really fancy advanced theorem that they don't really know or understand fully. And I hate to break it to you, but the person reading your personal statement can see right through it. I know for sure what I can when I read uh, students' personal statements. So people get in touch all the time, say, Jay, Jamin, would you mind reviewing my personal statement? And I look at it and I go, you've mentioned the black skulls equation. Firstly, you, you know, there's a typo in the in the equation. What is it about? And you go, uh, and then they go, oh, something to do with finance. And it's like, well, don't mention it. Unless, so the, the way I, you know, the best way to talk about if to know if you should mention something in your personal statement or not is ask yourself, could you give a five to 10 minute presentation on that topic to the person reading your personal statement? So this is someone who's obviously, you know, a professor at mathematics in Imperial University or whatever. So someone who already has a good background in mathematics. Could you confidently present, a, 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 give a presentation on that topic to them that lasts five to 10 minutes? If the answer is no, then don't mention it. If the answer is yes, then mention it and go and, you know, almost give a very, very mini brief presentation. So if you want to mention the black skulls equation or something else, sure. But you want to go into some depth to give some evidence that you understand it and you're happy with the applications or why you're interested in it or whatever. But you don't want to just name drop it and go, oh, cool, you know, I've name dropped something advanced, something you don't learn until third year uni. And that will make, you know, thinking that, oh, the interviewer is, I go, oh my gosh, this person knows what Black Skulls is. But let's give them an offer. That's not quite how it works, I'm afraid. Um, it's very, you know, interviewers do know, or people reading your personal statement, the professors do know that Google exists. So you could just Google advanced mathematics theorems and just name drop them in. So if you're going to mention a theorem or whatever, make sure you understand it. And that's kind of the vague but brief advice I wanted to give for your personal statement. There's loads of advice out there, but that's the main things that I, f I still see students making issues on, uh, making issues on, ma making errors. You know, they, they kind of still put and try and name drop a bunch of stuff in, still go for quantity over quality. Um, just remember, you're trying to convey your big math. Nerd. Pick a few things that you really enjoy in maths and that you found interesting in the d d discovery of, you know, and explain to them the journey of discovery you had. And yeah, don't bother name dropping kind of random theorems thinking it makes you sound smart. It does the opposite. If it can detect you've literally just name dropped a theorem, not given any context whatsoever, they've, they're just like, oh, this guy's just Googled a theorem, which it, then from their point of view is like, oh, did this guy applying not even have any theorems that, that they found interesting? They had to Google some. Maybe they're not a big math nerd. Maybe we shouldn't give them an offer. Anyway, as I say, if you are um, applying for maths, best of luck. And if you want some uh, additional support with the TMU, I'm running a masterclass series from the beginning of September. DM me TMU. I'll give you all the information there or send me an email, inquiries at jfimathstutoring.com. I'll leave a video on screen giving you some advice of what you should do in the months running up to the TMUA. So I'll uh, go and catch you over there.